Brooklyn. So this sistership, uh, we didn't plan just on our own. Uh, we are very, very happy to have SAPIO Foundry together here. Uh, they are an incredible strategic business unit that is part of SAP, and they support startups in their growth and in their expansion. They support innovation. And what is also amazing, they've created a women's and diversity group uh, take a program uh, that supports female founders and what they are building. So if you are interested in more of that, Dima here from, uh, from SAP Foundry is here. Say hi. <laughs> so you can come and talk to her about that and what they're doing. Um, exactly. Thanks so much, Dima. <laughs> so now, without me further talking about the family and everything around it, if you want to chat with me, please come. I would love to tell you more. But we have two incredible women that came to see us today and are here to share their expertise and uh, how they've built up their careers. So I hope you'll enjoy the interviews, feel inspired, and please ask as many questions as you can afterwards. I'm gonna pass the mic so you get a chance to, to uh, ask whatever you're curious about. So without further ado, please help me welcome Eva, the VP of People of Get Your Guide on stage. Thanks a lot Confi for your time and your presence here. Thanks for inviting me, it's a pleasure. So you initially studied anthropology, you didn't study business at all. Nope. So what did you take out of it and how did you end up working in HR? So anthropology is about people, about the human uh, kind, um, cultures, uh, so it's definitely uh, taught me a lot about that. Uh, it, uh, um, made me very passionate about traveling. Uh, that was part of studying, so I spent a lot of time in Southeast Asia uh, and other parts of the world studying cultures and, uh, and different political systems. Uh, so that was very interesting. Uh, and then um, I just uh, ended up in Berlin somehow and uh, was searching for an opportunity to work. Um, I started off as an intern in a company that uh, provided intercultural training, so I thought that's kind of cool and interesting and good continuation of my studies, but it turned out to be a recruiting agency. So uh, kind of by accident, I ended up doing recruiting and uh, I was very passionate about that as well because I found that as a recruiter um, it's, the, it's the best kind of entry into, into the business world because you have to learn about the business um, very quickly. You have to understand all the roles we, you're recruiting for. Um, so that's basically why I got stuck. Uh, and then I was uh, also lucky, you know, it's, uh, it's also about being um, uh, at the right uh, place in the right, at the right time, um, in the right place. Uh, and uh, so I, s I ended up at uh, Xenox, uh, which um, uh, formerly called Xenox, Xenox is now called Awin, which was one of the first you could call successful internet startups. And I don't know, does anyone know? He wins an exam. Uh, so it was very small when I joined, uh, grew a lot. I uh, started as a recruiter and uh, then um, uh, started to do other HR related topics like learning development. Um, and then that's how it all started. Um, so more or less by accident, uh, I ended up in the tech uh, scene in Berlin in HR, but I'm very happy about that. So what was the thing that attracted you to pursue it and not go back into anthropology, into more research? Um, I just felt that I learned a lot, like like still now I feel like every day I'm learning so much because um, I'm dealing with uh, people and people are very complex. Um, I have to learn a lot about myself, I have to be very self-aware uh, and uh, I have to learn uh, about how people interact, uh, how um, uh, good organization works, how to support and nurture a good culture in an organization uh, and I don't see that um, challenge uh, you know diminishing anytime soon i think is uh, it's going to continue to be very interesting for me um and i also felt that this is just like a um kind of a common theme in my in my um past um having started with anthropology uh, it's about people it's about cultures uh, so it feels like it's uh, it was always a good continuation and you were the head of hr at the wanda first yes and then you transitioned into Get Your Guide, where you're now the VP of People. And you've been instrumental in building up the team to now more than 500 
people, right? So would you look uh, specifically when you're recruiting new people and how do you make sure that the culture that is the core of the company remains or builds up on it in the time span where you grow s so big that you can't really micromanage everything? Um, I'm not sure I get the question. Are you asking about how to build the up the organization overall or the team? Maybe we start with the first part before. So what do you look into when you recruit people? What is sort of for you very important uh, aspect when you meet people firsthand to take them into the company? Yeah, I would say the most important thing is uh, is attitude and you might want to call it culture fit or whatever, you know, there's different different uh, words for that. But I think it's very important f uh, for people to have a growth mindset when they work in a startup because there's so much change. They need to adapt uh, every day and they need to grow every day because uh, everything's changing, the organization is changing, their jobs will be changing a lot. Uh, so that's the first thing I would look uh, for and that's much more important than expertise but obviously that's also helping because uh, especially as a startup and many of you will know that uh, you you need uh, people to hit the ground running so they start and they have to be productive from day one more or less. Um, so having some experience is always helpful um, and then I always look for um, potential, like is it someone that I see growing uh, fast and, and far in the organization? Um, I would say those are the most important things. When we talked, you also mentioned that you're trying to transition or uh, teach the team to be much more autonomous when asking to build up their own personal development, mm -hmm. uh, especially when it comes to any kind of activities, uh, learning-wise yeah. or other. Can you tell me a bit more about that restructuring? Yeah, I would say that's something that is generally important, but especially at Get Your Guide, something that we uh, value a lot, that people take ownership of you know their tasks of uh, their goals but uh, uh, also of their development so uh, it's not something that uh, the company necessarily needs to provide uh, but people need to really because they're the they're the uh, best to make a judgment on what they need to to develop right so um, what the company can do is create an environment uh, to support them where they can find the help that they need where they can get a lot of uh, good feedback and helpful growth feedback so that's uh, something we talk a lot about in the company what does growth feedback uh, sound like what does it look like? So it's feedback that helps me grow, obviously. Um, yeah, I would say that's, uh, that's the most important thing. And you are the first female member of the executive board of Get Your Guide. There are a lot of startups and big companies that have no female members in the board. Uh, did you personally notice any kind of instrumental change or affection? Why do you think it's so important that we work towards having more females in the board seats? Well, it's uh, you know a classic. You can't be what you what you can't see. So I think it's uh, um, it's just important for for women in the organization to see that there's the possibility of uh, of having a career in the company. Um, so I don't know how it changed because you know I don't know how it was before I joined. Um, but it's definitely uh, something where I think I don't know if if that's necessarily. <laughs> you know, because of the setup of the group. And uh, I wouldn't really call it diverse because I would wish for more females to be in the executive team. Uh, but we definitely work a lot on, on uh, building out our trust relationship, uh, being able to very openly talk about things. So I feel that whenever um, I see biases or feel biases, I can openly uh, talk about it, I can address it, uh, and people will listen in the executive team and they will see it as an op opportunity to grow. So I feel very kind of lucky in that sense. Have you yourself felt uh, gender bias when dealing with executing a decision or leading a team in a certain direction? Yeah, I mean, I have to say mostly in myself. Um, uh, I feel that uh, that's where we all have to start with, the biases that we have in ourselves. Uh, so all those typical um, behaviors that you know I ascribe to women as in the disease to please, to uh, try to always be accommodating, not selling yourself enough, not leveraging relationships enough. Um, I've definitely uh, seen those things. I've also seen uh, things like uh, um, speaking while female, where uh, you know you talk, you bring up an idea uh, and. Uh, no one reacts to it and then a man brings up the same idea and everybody reacts to it. So those things I've definitely experienced. Um, um, and I think it's important to be aware of them. Having said that, uh, I also feel that sometimes I see people talking about those things as um, additive to leadership roles, as in it would be good to have more female leaders because then uh, leadership teams change, they maybe 
you know, they grow more empathy, um, the communication improves, and those kinds of things. And I think this is very dangerous to think that way, to be honest, because we, by doing that, we're reinforce, reinforcing those biases. Uh, I think it would be, it's very important to, to mind your language and talk about what's good leadership rather than um, it's important to have more female leadership because uh, then you change the culture of leadership. Um, I generally fear that there's a lot of talk about uh, the differences between sexes and also the innate uh, differences. Um, and uh, personally, I'm, I'm a big advocate of um, being aware that uh, the biological differences are actually very small, especially in our behaviors, um, but they're very much socialized, right? So uh, while it is important to talk about those differences, uh, as in, as a, as a female leader, I'm trying to be aware of um, not exhibiting those behaviors like the disease to please. I'm also aware that those are socialized behaviors. They're not innate. I'm not born with them. Uh, I think that's very important. So in this context, what is your leadership style or what do you sort of pay attention to? Um, I th well, you can ask some people here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hope they will say any good <laughs> things. Um, well, I like to. I love. I, I love to see people growing. So, and th and the best way to 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 see that is just to give a lot of responsibility and ownership to people, and just maybe throw them into cold waters and 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 see how they react to that. Uh, that's something that gives me uh, great pleasure, and I'm I'm obviously always there to to give advice when it's necessary, but. Um, Seeing people grow and and develop uh, is the is what what drives me personally. Uh, so I try to create an environment uh, in my team where where people can can grow. And where do you draw uh, courage from? Because I mean, even in your position, you still are quite immersed into um I guess male leadership con counterparts, uh, and it can be quite intimidating for a lot to be in that environment and to stand up and to have your say in between. So where do you draw courage? Uh, to I would say I'm not things? always courageous, unfortunately. I wish I was, but it's definitely a goal that I have to to have a lot of courage. Um, it's different things. So uh, social relationships are very important, of course. Having peers uh, that you can very openly talk uh, talk with about those topics. So that's women, but also men. Um, knowing that um, people can change quite fundamentally, I think is important. So I, I have experienced that with in myself, uh, and that's uh, something that I believe in. That uh, change change is possible, um, and uh, change for the better. Um, also, that nothing's permanent. Uh, so I know that you know. Um, also, problems come and go. So whenever there's difficult times and, and tough times for me to go through, uh, I know that it's more an exercise of patience rather than futility. Because at some point, um, things will get better. That's how I would describe it. Do you yourself have role models, and what do you think of the importance of having role models? Super important. It's really important. So, and that's something that I seek out. Uh, like I, co I focus a lot on finding those role models because I, uh, I just know that they give me a lot of courage. Um, so I've worked for Davanda, uh, which had a, a female CEO. Um, that was good. Uh, now at Get Your Guide, we have our first female board member, um, and I really uh, thrive under her mentorship. Um, she's great. Uh, she's uh, had her career in difficult, more difficult times than than we have today. Um, and then you know, there's a lot of uh, really great authors uh, and 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 just people like uh, Sheryl Sandberg or uh, Susan Wojcicki and and people like that, where you know you don't have direct contact, but you can kind of uh, watch them on YouTube, read their books, um, and that's definitely helpful, I think. Do you consider yourself ambitious? Yes. Yeah. Where do you think that ambition comes from? Uh, I I would say it's. Uh, socialized, instilled in me, probably, uh, I don't know, from um, my parents, that would be my assumption, but uh, you have to ask a psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> from uh, working with people and observing your team, do you think there is a different approach to how women and men observe and go about ambition? Yeah, for sure. So. Um, <laughs> Definitely, men are definitely better at selling themselves. And we were just uh, talking with Sarah about that um, uh, earlier. Um, you see that even in applications. So uh, it's just the other day I was looking at an application for a senior position uh, from a guy who 
had like two internship in his in his resume. And uh, when I look at the the kind of the women who apply, they are totally overqualified. So that's something that that is real. Like it's, uh, I hope it's changing, and uh, it's good that people talk about it and uh, and kind of make it more visible. Um, I, d I definitely would say. Yeah, men men are better at, at, at marketing. They're also better at uh, leveraging relationships. That's something that I had to learn myself. Uh, so I think women are very good at building relationships, but then when it comes to asking for favors and, and leveraging the, the, the context that you have, women are usually more humble. Uh, and uh, I see men being better at just saying, okay, I, you know, it's a give and take uh, game. Um, you give me a favor now, I give you a favor next time. Uh, so they're better at kind of leveraging this network. And... Um, that's definitely something that helps a lot in the business world. What do you do at Get Your Guide to influence a woman to stand out or to help them basically uh, be more ambitious and uh, take on roles uh, that they might not think that they're uh, suitable for? To be honest, I f it feels like I don't have to do anything because we have so many strong women at Get Your Guide, and they just do it themselves. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I mean, we we I think it's a combination of um, structure and working uh, on uh, culture and more um, intrinsic uh, uh, topics like unconscious bias. So we are setting up an un un unconscious bias training, um, but then it's also the structure side where you look into the recru the recruiting processes and you try to make sure that your job ads are written in the language that attracts women. Uh, we have a blog, for example, Inside Get Your Guide, um, that uh, that also talks about female leadership and tries to promote le female leadership, um, just to show the world that this is a topic for us. Because um, you know, if I was searching for a job as a woman, I would look into the culture, the language that is used. Are there any fe other female leaders in the organization? How inclusive does the culture um, appear to me? And that's something that I think uh, companies need to need to work on in order to attract a more more diverse workforce. So it's this combination of looking at processes, uh, and it's not only recruiting; it also goes into obviously assessment uh, of uh, uh, of employees uh, to make sure that there's as, uh, as little bias as possible, um, promoting. Uh, so we do um, very closely observe our numbers. Uh, so in terms of, you know, how many females do we have on each level? Um, and uh, we're not, we're not, we don't work with quotas, um, um, but we do kind of try to um, encourage women to, to have a career and, pro and, and kind of pursue a career. I have one more question and then we can pass on the microphone to the audience. If you could go back in time and talk to your 16-year-old self, what would you tell her or what advice would you give her? Yeah, that's a, it's going to be a totally cliche answer. Sorry about this in advance. Uh, I would definitely um, tell her to believe in herself more uh, and I would tot totally not have taken the advice and it wouldn't have helped because that's not something that you can achieve on an intellectual way. It's only something you can achieve um, by experience. Um, but I feel that, I mean, talking about what's, what, what's holding you back to have a career, and I think this is the one thing that was holding me back the, the most, lack of confidence, um, and uh, um, yeah, not enough um, belief in myself. Beautiful. Thank you so much for the beautiful answers. Thanks for the questions. <laughs> Hi, thank you so Hi. much for uh, for the speech. Uh, we were talking about recruitment, so I wanted to ask you maybe uh, what is your advice? How would, uh, where would you advise people to look for uh, new recruits? Like, wh where would you advertise that? Especially if you're an up and coming startup and you're, for example, only two or three people, and your, for example, also your social media channels aren't that diverse and that like re far reaching yeah so you mean in order to, to have a diverse workforce so yeah. recruit for, a diver for yeah. diversity um i i think i mean <laughs> it's a, maybe a general recruiting uh, advice uh do as much direct search as you can so just linkedin and and contact people directly uh and then as i said uh try to um so anything that someone from the outside world can see and learn about your company try to make sure that it's uh um it reflects uh, inclusion uh, and an inclusive culture so the language you use the stories you uh, you talk about I mean obviously there should be real and authentic it shouldn't be anything made up um, but I think that's that's something so people do look at that and and they are attracted by it's a bit of a chicken and egg problem to be honest because um, inclusion comes from a diverse team so um, uh, but if you have the 
um, the will to build it up and that's also an investment, right? If it's a small company, especially, and you just need to recruit really fast, you don't have the time and, and then waiting for, you know, the candidate that is maybe female for a specific position is an investment. Um, I think it's important to, um, balance is important, but still to, to make a little bit of an investment in that direction early on, because later on it gets, it gets more and more difficult to, um, to to bring in more uh, inclusion and uh, diversity. So if you have a workforce of 100 people and, and you have a big problem with lack of diversity, then it's really hard to um, turn that around. Whereas when you're really small, that's something like if you, if you have that in mind and you're willing to invest, um, then you can only win. And if you work in a company, what would be your advice to uh, uh, include uh, more, di like, kind of provoke more diversity or yeah. like make people more aware of the biases and so on like uh so um a few things. Uh, I would say peer support is super important. So make sure maybe you have a group of people, uh, women and men that you can talk about th uh, that topic. Um if you see um behaviors that are biased or that, that are not inclusive, obviously uh, talk about it, address it, uh, but not as a victim, but as someone who wants to uh, change things, as someone who's very positive about it and wants to, so let's say you see that behavior in, in a man, in a, in a male colleague, uh, don't be the victim, don't be defensive, but try to help that person uh, get into a more inclusive realm of, of thinking. Um, yeah, just just be courageous and and believe in it. Have a vision. I think that's also very important. Uh, if you if you have a vision of what it would look like if uh, if there weren't uh, any biases and and there wasn't any sexism, um, if you ca if you can see that in your mind, I think that makes it easier. Um, here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thank you for your talk. It was very interesting. So um, with your comment about the stark differences between men and women in the ap application process, um, what are some tips you can give for a woman when they're applying? I mean, as I said, I think it's important to think about those differences and kind of just be very self-aware and try to observe those behaviors in yourself. And not, don't, not in a blaming way, so it's not about kind of, you know, uh, beating yourself up about it, but it's something that we grew up with, we've been socialized that way, but we can also change that. You know, it's not a biological innate uh, thing uh, that we have to live with for the rest of our lives, but it's something that we can work with. Um, so kind of be a little bit forgiving uh, yourself, but if you see, for example, that you are not selling yourself very aggressively um, and, and you may be too humble, then maybe you, you know, might want to work on your language, uh, ask for feedback maybe uh, from people um, and just step by step um, try to be aware of uh, those behaviors that, uh, that aren't helping your career. There's, uh, uh, there's one good book, for example, that I can recommend. It's called How Women Rise. And that explains a lot of those um, biases like or behaviors of women, like, for example, the disease to please, not leveraging uh, your networks, um, just not being good at, at marketing um, for your own profile, uh, pu putting your, your job uh, above your career, um, things like that. Um, so just being aware of them already is, I think, the most important first step. Hey, um, thank you for your talk. Um, I have a qu question regarding uh, s salary. And I think that's a really big topic that can lead to um, differences between men and women. And even if the pay differences are small, they really d add up over a long period mm. of time. Um, and it, like a key reason I remember reading about is that women don't push harder when negotiating their salary. And um, is there something that you can do about that? Is it to ne negotiate harder or is there like a policy that can be put in place that ensures that s salaries are fair regardless of people's skills to negotiate. Yeah. Both, so my advice would be, yes, push harder, negotiate, push hard. That's it. Um, yeah. There's no reason not to do that. Uh, and then in terms of structure, yes, I think it's important. That's something that we do at Get Your Guide. Uh, it's something that might sound even corporate is uh, we do have tiers. Uh, that's uh, one way to kind of counter counteract those, those biases. But then you still have behaviors. Like even if you have, for example, um, everyone on the same level in the same job gets paid the same, you still have, you, know, you could still have the bias of w maybe females are put on a lower level than, than males, even though they have the same performance. So I think you also have 
to work on those unconscious biases culturally. I don't know, give training, or just make it a topic regularly. Um, but yeah, ultimately, I would say it's definitely something that I see women pushing less for, uh, and there's no good reason not to. People, and do you also take care to select the, the right people for, for the job, so not just to, yeah, so if you also, how do you select from, from so many CVs? Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a good question. I mean, it's, it's, it depends on the job. So for some jobs, we even have video interviewing. For some jobs, we send out a test, for example. But it's definitely a lot of uh, uh, application screening. And for this, we, we just have a competency profile that we work with. So we know what the recruiter knows what, what is required for the job. Um, and then usually there's a phone screen, uh, which talks about motivation. What's your motivation to join? Um, what's your background a little bit? And then and there's a face-to-face -face, uh, uh, stage where people come in usually for three or four hours and they meet several people um, and so that we can make a decision very quickly. Um, yeah, but it's definitely, the volume is definitely a challenge. Yeah, thank you. If, do you have a CV that you want to send me later? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Anybody it's else? Uh, EVA at getyourguide.com. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do one more over there. Oh, sure. I'll come back to you. Hi. Um, so you mentioned in terms of a growth mindset um, and your kind of goal of throwing people into cold water. At what point do you pull them out of the water? <laughs> and That's what is a really good question. Yeah. Um, but I think you can feel that. I mean, you can you can see that. You talk about it. I think it's very important to re have a. I think the one most important thing is to, to have a trust relationship uh, with your colleagues, with your peers, with your supervisors, but also with your team. And if you have that trust relationship, then I expect that people would tell me if it's too cold and if it's too too difficult. Um, and and if I don't have that, then I've definitely done something wrong. So. Um, I hope my team always feels uh, safe, uh, in a safe place, uh, and uh, I hope they always feel like if it's, if it's too much, then they can tell me. So I also have a question regarding the behavior of the people. So you say before, sometimes we tend to be very pleased, right? So, but people actually expect us to be like that. So when we get a little bit more straightforward, let's say, they say, oh, why are you rude? So, yeah. but if a boy says that, they know it's okay because he's a straight, he also says that in a very straightforward, yeah. but it's yeah. okay for him. Yeah. I have feel that very often, uh, yeah. especially at work. Yeah. So when like a guy says something very firm and, you know, steadily, yeah. he actually, it makes sense. But when a woman or a, or a person like, Let's say, let's say me say something is like oh that's a little yeah. bit too rude. Yeah. So how do you manage this? Yeah. So well, it's a really good question, and it refers to a concept. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of the double bind uh, bias concept, which which basically says uh, as a female leader you are always in a catch-22 situation. It's always a dilemma because you always go against a certain set of social stereotypes. So that's because the the stereotype of being female. Uh, stands in stark con uh, contrast to the stereotype of being a good leader, uh, where a good leader is decisive, they're sometimes aggressive, they're strong, uh, and a woman is, you know, the stereotype is more accommodating, um, talkative, diplomatic. Uh, so there's a contrast there. So you, you, you're always in a dilemma. So either you are fulfilling the female stereotypes and, you, and you're not a good leader, or you're fulfilling the leadership stereotype and... Um, and then you and then you go against the stereotype of a of a of a woman, uh, and it's a that's a very interesting phenomenon. It's very tough. The way I personally try to deal with that is um, I'm just you know make myself aware of that uh, of that dilemma, um, and. Um, and I try to then uh, move my mind towards what's good leadership. So I don't really care if it's a woman or a man. And actually, I mean, it, as much as I like uh, events like this, I would much rather have us talk about good leadership than than female leadership. I think that's where we should where that that should be the goal, right? And then good leadership can be anything. That could be um, being assertive, but it could also be ac being accommodating. Whatever works for the team, whatever works for the person. Um, and that's what I, that's how I try to get out of this. Uh, because then I can try to be very authentic. I can I can try to be myself, and that is sometimes assertive, or it's sometimes also accommodating. Um, as, it's, as, 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 as soon as I think in those terms, I'm reinforcing those those biases, and I'm kind of nurturing them. I'm perpetuating them, and that's what I I just don't want to do that. I don't know if that helps, but it, that's how I do it. Perfect. 
Thanks a lot, Eva. Thanks a lot for the wonderful questions. If you guys have more, you can ask afterwards. Thank you Thank again you. for yeah. being here. Give her a warm applause. Good luck on the lead.